let's talk a bit about Gemini astrology today. You know, nowadays I am doing a course on Gemini astrology, the 2023 batch of Gemini course, which is very different from all the other Gemini courses. Why? Because this course is my own research, my own interpretation, which is found nowhere else. And believe me, students are learning those researches, which is more valuable than a lifetime of learning. Because it is a lifetime of learning. So, talking of Gemini astrology, you may know about my concept. If not, I will repeat it for you. The Charakarakas, according to me, there are only seven Charakarakas. Atma Karak, Amatya Karak, Bratri Karak, Matri Karak, Putra Karak, Gyati Karak and Tara Karak. These seven Charakarakas are the seven planets from Sun to Saturn. So Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn. These seven planets will become seven Karakas. The planet with highest minutes, right? Not degrees, but minutes. The planet with highest minutes will be Atam Karak. The planet with second highest minute will be Amatya Karak. Third highest minute will be Bhratri Karak. Fourth highest minutes will be Matri Karak. Fifth highest minutes will be Putra Karak. Sixth highest minutes will be Yati Karak. And the least minutes will be the Dara Karak. Why I am using minutes instead of degrees? Because says Gemini have told us to do so. It is very surprising to realize that say Gemini have written about in the shloka, say Gemini have written the word is Kaladi, which directly means minutes and does not mean degrees. Degrees will be Amshadi, but the shloka mentions Kaladi. Now, despite mentioning Kaladi very clearly, everyone takes minutes only and not everyone takes degrees only and not minutes. Why this show of ignorance, lack of astrological knowledge is being displayed by everyone, I don't understand. Maybe this is because people just follow each other and afraid of doing original researches. However, what people do, I'm not much concerned about that. My approach is pretty simple. Now you people may know that Dar Karak talks about marriage and almost everything about life partner as well. So if you have to analyze marriage through Germany astrology, how you will do that, I will share you a major trick tip, technique regarding this. So first of all, let's understand a thing. Atma Karak is the king of the horoscope. Right? Atma Karak is the king of the horoscope and if Atma Karak is powerful, it is told so is the Mokshio. Means to say that if the Atma Karak is powerful, it will give Moksh or rather take freedom to the native. If Atma Karak is powerful, the person will have freedom to do anything. If the Atma Karak is not powerful, then the person will live into bondage. Live in bondage means the person have to, you know, like the person cannot do anything very freely. The person will have to consider multiple factors before doing things means to say he is not living a very good life where he can exercise a lot of freedom. So first of all, regarding marriage, you know, two type of people are there. One who have choice in marriage. Another who don't have choice in marriage. When you talk to people, you generally see people say, I don't want to marry this type of person. I don't want to marry that type of person. But are you having a choice? If someone is beautiful enough, if someone is successful enough, if someone is attractive enough, they will have a choice. But many people do not have a choice. Right? Many people just, they fall in love. They fall in, they go into a relationship where the relationship will be initiated by other and they will get married to that person only. They don't have a choice because they are not in such a good societal proposition where they get to choose. Right? Some people are, you know, married on the married, uh, you know, married by their family members and all of these things. So Dara Karak, the planet with least minutes in the horoscope. If this Dara Karak is powerful, powerful means if this Dara Karak is exalted, is in own Rashi, is Vargottam is in Mulitrikon, then in that particular scenario, you will get to choose in marriage. That means you will 
have multiple options of choosing life partner you will be have such a status in society that many people will want to marry you on the other hand when darkarak is weak when darkarak is debilitated combust goes into planetary war or is of mediocre strength in that particular scenario generally such people don't get a choice to choose they either have arranged marriage or their societal status societal standard their proposition is not as such that they can make a choice so this one thing is very very important another point is you see this adara karak in gemini astrology specifically talking of this karak scheme atma karak is the king atma karak is the major planet like in horoscope reading ascendant is the major point in this charakarak system of gemini atma karak is the atmakarak is the main point atmakarak is the linchpin so if this darakarak is friendly to atmakarak in that particular scenario you in marriage you will have a good marriage there will be good experience so two two types of relationships are there right first of all when you get married to someone the circumstances are supportive your family likes the life partner you have good repo with the uh, family of your life partner and all other circumstances are suitable favorable for you your job setup is as such that you get you know much time to spend with each other and all of these things this happen when the darakarak is friendly to atmakarak if the darakarak is inimical to atmakarak in that particular scenario the conditions surrounding marriage is not good so your family may not like the life partner the life partner's family may not like you your professional commitments and financial commitments can be as such that you don't get much time to spend with each other or just after marriage there can be some circumstances which will hinder the development of your understanding so this is another thing that needs to be checked in depth so that you know how is the coming four five years after marriage this is also very very important now regarding regarding this friendship enmity one thing you should make very clear sun is friendly towards moon mars and jupiter inimical towards other planets moon is friendly towards sun jupiter only with mercury also moon is okay okay with other planets moon is inimical mars is friendly towards sun and moon it is okay okay with jupiter with other planets mars is inimical mercury is friendly with saturn venus with other planets he is inimical jupiter is friendly with sun moon and saturn with other planets it is not good venus is good with saturn only with other planets it is not very good specifically inimical towards moon and sun and mars with mars it is okay okay not very inimical as such saturn is friendly to venus and mercury jupiter also inimical towards the other planet so based on this particular table that i have just told you you should find the friendship between atmakarak and darakarak that will tell you how is the situation surrounding your marriage around your marriage for example if the darakarak is powerful you get to choose the life partner you have a choice but if this darakarak is friendly to the atmakarak in that particular scenario you choose the life partner and the conditions are also very good so you can get married very easily also on the other hand if darakarak is powerful you get to choose the life partner say because of this choice you are going to have love marriage but if this darakarak is not friendly to atmakarak in that particular scenario the conditions will be hostile for marriage the condition will not be supportive of marriage and to marry your life partner you may have to wait you may have to wait for the circumstances to be favorable to you and other such things can be there right this is what i mean by this particular thing most importantly talking about the quality of marriage one thing is very very important you have to analyze the darakara first of all you see there is a very beautiful concept in astrology that is the concept of support now atmakarak is the king atmakarak is the major planet and atmakarak should support the darakarak right atmakarak is the significator of the self 
it is not the significator of soul it is the significator of the self it is not atmakarak it is atmakarak now the basic principle of astrology which is also applicable in gemini astrology is that a planet support the other planets which are in kendra to the planet so basically if the darakarak is in 1 4 7 10 houses from atmakarak it is 100% supported from atmakarak if the darakarak is in panfar from atmakarak second fifth eighth or 11th house from atmakarak then darakarak is only 75% supported and if the darakarak is an apokalim from atmakarak third sixth ninth and 12th house from atmakarak then the darakarak is only 50% supported remember in this point i am calculating from atmakarak to darakarak and not darakarak to atmakarak in that particular scenario where atmakarak is completely supporting darakarak the marital life is generally good when the atmakarak is only 75% supporting darakarak then marital life is good but some ups and downs are there when darakarak is only 50% supported by atmakarak in that particular scenario marriage is not good at all there are multiple ups and downs and disturbances in life which will hinder proper enjoyment of marriage with proper enjoyment of marriage and relationship with the life partner in this particular scenario only this much is not enough you see there are three four types of strength for a planet so atmakarak is the king atmakarak is the significator of the self and this kendra panfar apokalim division that we have just seen is about the support but leaving this support aside also a planet to be able to give 100% of their results should be powerful as well now this power power can come from time power can come from space so two types of power is there one is the power of space this is the power of rashi if a planet is situated situated in exaltation rashi un rashi multrikon rashi varguttam rashi or if a planet is powerful by being retrograde you see that planet is powerful for the complete world if right now sun is in scorpio sun is in scorpio for everyone for me sitting in india for someone sitting in usa for someone sitting in australia for someone sitting in europe everyone is having sun in scorpio right now right this is the point this is the rashi based space based strength this space based strength makes the planet beneficial to you so if the darakarak while being in kendra to the atmakarak is also getting the strength of the space your marital life is very good and this good marital life the marriage is also very beneficial for you that means to say because of the help support love care guidance of the life partner you also succeed in life you also do well in life and because of listening to the life partner with the support of the life partner you will succeed you will become rich affluent satisfied and all of that right so if rashi based support space based support is there the result is even more beneficial then there is a time based support also sun and jupiter Uh, sorry jupiter and mercury are dikvali in the ascendant sun jupiter and mercury are powerful in the first second and 12th house sun and uh, mars are powerful in the 11th 10th and 9th house saturn is powerful in the 6th 7th 8th house moon venus is powerful in the 3rd 4th and 5th house this is power related to strength another thing is if someone is born in day time for them jupiter sun and venus will be powerful for someone born in night time mars saturn and moon will be powerful in the same manner if someone is born in krishna paksh dark fortnight malefic planets sun saturn mars will be powerful if someone is born in bright fortnight then for them moon mercury jupiter venus will be powerful these are all time based strength so four five strength i have told you directional strength day night based strength dark fortnight and bright fortnight based strength what does this strength do a planet is technically useless if the result of the planet is not reaching earth at your time of birth so as i told you just now right now sun is in scorpio sun is in scorpio for the whole world so if someone is born right now in india and australia will there be no difference of course there will be difference the time in india right now is different the time in australia right now will be different and the time decides the ascendant of the place so despite the fact that both these children right now born in india and australia will have the same horoscope because ascendants will change 
the house lordship of the planet, the house placement of the planet, aspects over houses of the planet will also change over time, right? So the influence of the planet will not be equal. If I am saying that sun is getting strength in the 10th, 11th or 9th house, I am also saying that sun is getting strength in afternoon because sun will be in 10th house in afternoon only. Now, this is afternoon right now in Europe, USA, but it is not uh, afternoon right now in India or Australia or at other places, right? So this is subjective to the place of birth. And if the planet, this is time-based strength. And if the planet is not getting the strength from time, then no matter how powerful the planet is or how good the planet is, the planet does not show their result at right point of time. So two things are needed. If a planet is powerful, if a planet is good, that planet will generally give good result. But if the planet is not getting a strength of the power, then it is a general good result. Whereas in Dasha Antar Dasha or when need arises, the planet cannot help. I will tell you with respect to Dar Karak how it happens. If Dar Karak is having time based strength, I have told you three sources of strength. All three of this you apply. First of see, first of all, see which planet is Dar Karak, then apply these three strengths. If, if the Dar Karak is getting any of these types of strength, then at the time of distress, your life partner will actually come to help you. If the Dar Karak is not getting any of these three types of strength, then at the time of distress, your spouse or life partner may not be able to help you because they are struck into other situations or anything like that. So if the Dar Karak goes in Kendra to Atma Karak, the marital life is enjoyable. In this, if the Dar Karak is also powerful as per space, this enjoyment is very, there is not only enjoyment in marriage, but the life partner is also rich, well to do. And as per the guidance, advice, etc. of the life partner, you will prosper as well. And if this Dara Karak is also getting the strength of the time, then in the time of distress, the guidance, support, help or resources, finances, etc. of the life partner will be great saving. If any of these things is missing, then in that particular scenario, you remove that particular part of the prediction and say accordingly. For example, if the Dara Karak is in Kendra to Atma Karak, but is not having sign based strength, but having time based strength, it means to say your marital life is good. The life partner is not very resourceful, but tries their level best to help you in the time of need. If the Dara Karak is in Kendra to Atma Karak, also having Rashi based strength, but not having time based strength. That means your marital life is good. The resources, advices, etc. of the life partner also comes to your rescue. But because time-based strength is not there, when you are in need, when you are in dire need, somehow the life partner cannot help you. So just the general advice, etc. of the life partner is useful, but life partner is not very resourceful to actually help you at bad times. In that particular case, in the case where all three factors are matching, the Dara Karak is in Kendra also getting time-based strength, also space-based strength also. Then not only the advice of the spouse is working very good for you, but the spouse themselves is also very resourceful. So when you land into problem, all of the resources life partner will use to help you and you will sail through the tough time very easily. If the Dara Karak is in Kendra to Atma Karak, but neither getting time-based strength nor getting space, not getting time-based strength in that particular scenario, though your marital life is good, but life partner is not able to provide you correct guidance, etc. And life partner is also not able to help you when you are in distress. In this scenario, you can say your marital life is good only because of you. And there is no specific virtue that the life partner is having. Now, if the Dara Karak is in Panahar to Atma Karak, 2nd, 5th, 8th and 11th house, then all of these results, as I told in Kendra, is available in 75% only. And if the Darak Arak is in Apoklim to Atma Karak, that is in 3rd, 6th, 9th and 12th house, in that particular scenario, all of the results that I told is present in 50% amount only. So even lesser amount, the guidance, the resources and all of these things that I told is available in 50% only. If the 
Darakarak is in Apuklim, right? Third, sixth, ninth, twelfth house from Atmakarak. Or is in Panafar from Atmakarak, second, fifth, eighth, and eleventh house from Atmakarak. Then the support respectively is 25%, 75%. In this scenario, if the Darakarak is also further afflicted, right? Debilitated, combust, going into planetary war, or is further expected by strong malefics, you will use natural malefics here, Sun, Mars. Saturn Rahu. And in Navamsh also, if the Darkara becomes weak, then it can deny marriage altogether as well. Right? The Adamakara can deny marriage altogether as well. Further, regarding the Adamakara, you know, every Rashi is having a particular letter. Right? Every Rashi is having a particular letter and uh, I can give you a list for it. Just to see. this. So this Daraka gives you a lot of detail about your life partner also. I made a research many years ago, which was also published in a particular magazine, if you know. And I've seen that this, you know, this Navamsh of Darakarak, right? Navamsh of the planet with lowest degree. This Navamsh of the Atmakarak is very, very important. And it gives you a whole lot of detail about your life partner. For example, if your Darakarak is into Aries Navamsh, then your life partner is the first letter of their name. This is generally the official name. Sometimes it can be pet name also when the person, like generally in the case of females, if the females are not working and their pet name is very prominent, that maximum of their relatives call them by their pet name only, then the pet name becomes the original name. Other than that, for a professional person, official name is the original name only. Name is the name which maximum people know you from, which if called in a marketplace, you will try to find who is calling my name. That is okay. So if you're, you know, using this Darakarak, specifically the Navamsh of this Darakarak, you can get a whole lot of detail about your to-be life partner or your life partner, a current life partner or to-be life partner spouse, basically. So research that I published in that particular uh, magazine, right, some years ago, I think four or five years ago, if I'm not incorrect, was that that based on the Navam Shafatmakarak, the first letter of the name of the life partner can be found out. For example, if the Darakarak is going into Aries Navamsh, then the name of the life partner is generally from C, L, or A. If the Atmakarak is going into Taurus Navamsh, then the name of the Atma, then the name of the spouse is generally from the letter E, I, O, A, and V. If the Atmakarak is going into Gemini Navamsh, then in that particular scenario, K, H, or D is the first initial of the name of the life partner. For Atmakarak going into Cancer Navamsh, H, D are the two initials that feature in the name of the, that is the first letter of the name of the spouse. For Atmakarak in Leo Navamsh, the letter M and T are the first letters of the name of the life partner. In the case of Atmakarak in Virgo Navamsh, P, P, S, P are the major letters. If Atmakarak is in Libra, then R and T is the initial. If Atmakarak is in Scorpio Navamsh, then T, N, Y, U is the major letter. Atmakarak in Sagittarius Navamsh, Y, B, D, F, M is the major letter Atmakarak in Capricorn Navamsh, J, K, G is the major letter Atmakarak in Aquarius Navamsh, then also G, S, D is the major letter. And when Atmakarak is in Pisces Navamsh, then D, T, J, C, and D are the major letters in the name of the spouse. It is either the first letter in the name of the life partner or if the life partner is having a name where two letters are repeated. For example, in my name Shubham, I write S-H-U-B-H-A-M. So this H is repeated twice. 
so either this is the first initial of the letter or it is that particular letter which is repeated more than once in the name or is the major initial for example if you take my name shubham bh or b is the prominent letter right so the navamsh of the darakarak also decodes the major letter in the name of the spouse right other than that the complexion of the life partner also comes from the navamsh of darakarak so aries taurus cancer and sagittarius scorpio pisces will indicate white complexion other will indicate black or vitis complexion other rashis will indicate black or vitis complexion gemini leo virgo libra capricorn aquarius will indicate vitish or darker complexion for the life partner not only that the major profession of like you know in the family of the life partner there will be one major bread and butter earner right one major person who earns the bread and butter in the family of the life partner not the life partner the one in the family of the life partner so what will be the profession of or generally you say na my wife is from a family of teachers or my husband is from a businessman family so this particular thing the you know professions indicated by the navamsh rashi lord of daragarak is generally the profession so if the navamsh rashi lord of the daragarak is uh, jupiter then generally the spouse comes from a family of teachers or a family of managers advisors ministers right when the adhikarak goes into the navamsh of sun then generally spouse comes from a family of uh, you know a family of government servants bureaucrats etc right for other planets you know if you follow my videos you know the you know the professions indicated by planet so i am not explaining every planet the video will be very very long right acha chalo let's complete it because we have started right if the atmakara goes into the navamsh of moon then generally the life partner comes from the family of photographers people in business entertainment industries etc if the atmakara is in the navamsh of mercury then also a spouse comes from business family the family of bankers teachers authors if the atmakara goes into venusian navamsh then generally the spouse comes from businessman family family of advisors family of ministers family of government servants the family of people engaged in professions related to women family of people engaged in clothes business mercury also indicates clothes business if the atmakara is sorry if the darakara goes into the navamsh of saturn then in that particular scenario the life partner comes from the family of actors or uh, businessman family generally people in the uh, family of the maximum people in the family of the life partner is self employed do some own work such as owning shop owning shops and service industries etc all right last but not the least the navamsh rashi occupied by darakarak is a very prominent rashi in the horoscope of spouse for example you say if darakarak is going into pisces rashi in d9 then in the horoscope of the life partner either pisces will be ascendant or ascendant lord will be situated in pisces moon will be in pisces moon sign lord will be situated in pisces or pisces will have maximum planets or the lord of pisces jupiter will be the most powerful planet or the most powerful planet in the horoscope will be in pisces so you say exalted venus will be in pisces jupiter in own rashi will be in pisces or virguttam planet will be in pisces so the rashi occupied by darakarak in navamsh is also the most prominent rashi in the d1 chart of the life partner right and most importantly what you get from your life partner what is the major contribution from life partner is also decided by the navamsh rashi occupied by the darakarak for example if darakarak is going into aries navamsh then support then the most invaluable things that you get from your life partner in your marriage is support or in a bad combination it can also indicate physical violence in the case of taurus you know love of family proper guidance and you know the art of behavior how to behave properly you learn from your life partner you learn from relationship 
right when the atmakara goes into gemini and avamsh then you know the marriage the relationship improves your communication and you know makes you more committed more firm there you know the couple enjoy sexuality a lot when the darakara is going into the navamsha of uh, cancer in that particular scenario you know the connection between the couple is very great they enjoy each other's company they travel to multiple destinations right when the darakara is going into leo navamsha in that particular scenario protection solace is what you get from your spouse when the darakara is going into virgo navamsha in that particular scenario you see good bond and spending time with each other and high sexuality is what you enjoy best with your life partner when the atmakarak is going to libra navamsha then generally people with their life partner start a new venture start a new business right they enjoy clothes well right they they enjoy spending luxury items they uplift their status of life after marriage when atmakarak goes to uh scorpio navams in that particular scenario the life partner teaches you ethics and morals life partner teaches you how to become clever to the world life partner teaches you how to behave properly for success when the atmakara is going into sagittarius navams in that particular scenario the guidance of your life partner makes you thrive your life partner is very eth ethical very moral your life partner teaches you how to do things properly your life partner teaches you good lessons right the marriage changes your behavior completely when the darakara is going into capricorn now i'm in that particular scenario the help of your life partner in tough times the support of your life partner in your profession is the major backbone of your relationship and it is only because of your life partner that you never fall or never step back in your life if the atmakara is going into aquarius now i'm then you and your life partner you both will do lot of philanthropical activities with each other you and your life partner will be very strongly connected to each other and it is the dedication devotion towards each other and the you know and the approach of standing with each other under all circumstances is the backbone of the relationship when the atmakarak is going into pisces and avamsh then the guidance of the life partner specifically in matters of how to behave how to manage finances and the love care affection of the life partner is the backbone of the relationship in this way using the darakarak multiple things about marriage and life partner can be known with confidence and the speciality about gemini system of astrology as i have always been saying is in parashar system and in other systems when you go to analyze first of all if you want to analyze something you have multiple options 7th house 7th lord venus rashi navamsh and all divisional charts you have multiple options when you analyze this multiple options multiple results come up and then you have to see the strength of planet weakness of planet and all of these things and then you will have to decide in normal system gemini system is very accurate precise to the point and according to my experiences the prediction in gemini is very easy to find it is clearly done there is no scope of confusion and the analysis with gemini astrology is quick easy brilliant applies 100% and rarely fails So anyone who wants to uplift their level of astrology, want to predict with confidence, predict with ease, and predict quickly, should practice Gemini astrology, right? And to know Gemini astrology the way Sage Gemini wanted it to be known, Sage Gemini wanted it to be learned and practiced, you should consider joining my Gemini course, which is currently running.